Right, Good evening, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. The Board of Selectmen is called to order at 6 p.m. August 15th. Uh, tonight we're going to discuss uh, the Ocean Avenue Seawall Project, and Megan's here to give us uh, an update on it. And, and after that, if anybody has any questions, they're more than welcome to come up to the podium and do, introduce yourself, and we'll talk about it. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you for having me again. As you remember, I was here last Thursday to give you guys an update on the seawall project. And at that time, our focus of that discussion was really on why we had the wall at the height it was and talking about those critical slopes where we needed to provide the crash protection and identifying the areas where we could reduce the wall because we didn't have the critical slopes and we didn't need to do that. And we had also at that time talked about some other options about dropping the wall and providing a rail very similar to the Landigan Bridge rail, that steel one as an alternative. But at the end of that meeting, we understood we were proceeding forward with keeping the wall at the height it was designed in the crash rated or crash required areas, and then looking at dropping the wall as required by the River Club um, and John Rinaldi in the areas in front of their properties that didn't require it. So what we did on Tuesday is we went and met on site with John Rinaldi and members from the River Club to discuss this. And at that time, it was determined that it had been made very clear about what the actual height of the wall was going to be on the project area. Um, so as we had discussed, there are minimum requirements for the barrier height of the wall. And the way we designed the wall is we had set the top of the wall based on the minimum requirement at the highest point in the road. So the standards for guardrail are two foot 10 inches as measured from the road. So we found the highest point in the road, we went up that two foot 10 inches and we set the wall there and we carried a consistent wall height across the whole project. However, the road profile, it has a vertical profile that varies. There are dips and sags in it, which result in the actual wall exposure at the back of the sidewalk to vary um, across the whole project. So that's what I want to just make sure that's clear to everyone today. So on the screen behind you and up on the TV, you can see this is the wall as currently designed and in the contract here. What this is showing you is that dark gray area is the exposed height of the wall. The pink dotted line is the sidewalk grade. So as you can see, the sidewalk is what you would be walking on. We've carried the top of the wall consistent and you can see that the wall, actual exposed wall height varies from 27 to 39 inches across the 600 feet of the project area. Uh, so you can see in the middle, Megan, that the sidewalk is at its highest. Correct. And, the, and so the reveal would be at the shortest. Right. And then uh, at the beginning on the left is where probably the uh, sidewalk is at its lowest and so the wall is at its highest. Right. So to help orient everyone, we are looking at this profile like as if we were standing on the Kennebec River. The Nonantum property. Kennebunk. Kennebunk, sorry. It's okay. Um, the Nonantum is on your left. The bridge is all the way to your right. You can see that first break in the opening is the access to John Rinaldi's house. So we have his driveway and then his gate to his deck on the left, and then the littler opening on the right is the access to the river club. So as um, Lori was mentioning, that area just to the right of Rinaldi's property, that is where the high point in the road, it's pretty much around where Grandview intersects uh, Ocean Ave, and that is where we went from that road grade up two foot 10 inches and set the wall height. And we carried a consistent wall height that ensures we meet our crash rating across the entire project area. But the wall, actual exposure of the wall does vary from approximately 27 to 39 inches throughout the project area. Um, there was some concern after the meeting about trying to keep this wall with a more consistent reveal. So we worked late last night and early this morning into trying to revise the top of the wall um, to provide a more consistent reveal across the whole project. So what we did is took the road profile itself and brought it off 27 or sorry two foot ten inches across the whole project not just at the high point and then tried to create a new top of wall alignment that would best fit that and still provide us the minimum requirements at the road so this would be our redesigned wall this gives you about 27 to 30 inches of wall height um, 
as we go along the entire profile. Uh, we've also, in this design, um, took into account what was discussed in the areas in front of John Rinaldi and the River Clubs. So there was a desire in those areas that are the non-critical slope areas to drop the wall to anywhere from a 9 to 16 inch reveal depending on the slope of the sidewalk. So that's what this design here would be. And for a comparison, you can see here we put the current wall design with the redesign of the wall so you can see how much less concrete, where the wall is lower, where you may see more views of the uh, river in that point. We have shared this um, alternate uh, wall alignment, top of wall alignment with the contractor. They're actively working with their wall manufacturer to determine um, what cost and schedule implications may happen for that design. They won't have a definitive information to us until early next week. Um, with respect to cost, they have acknowledged that this redesign, while it does have less concrete, we have now created a custom wall. Um, you lose some of the efficiencies that you get with a prefab wall with keeping all of the wall a consistent height. So this custom design, um, with, which was meant to try to keep a uh, consistent profile along the whole site as much as possible, will require uh, more form work, um, more lead time to produce, and therefore it's not guaranteed that it actually would be less cost overall. With respect to schedule, we are being told right now that um, they are still trying to do everything possible that if this is a decision you want to go, that they can still do that this year as long as the decision is made early next week. Um, understanding you won't find out the cost implications till next week, when we find out the cost implications, a decision would need to be turned around pretty quickly um, with respect to that. So understanding the timeline and the criticality of trying to get this project constructed this year, you know, and knowing a decision needs to be made soon, we see right now there's, there's probably three options that could be evaluated and discussed. One is going with the wall as currently designed with the top of wall consistent and incorporating the drops in the wall where desired by the River Club and John Rinaldi. So we would add those areas in, work with them on that. We could go with the revised design, which is providing a varying wall, top of wall elevation in order to try to keep the wall reveal consistent. Um, the other option is we could go back to what was discussed when I was here last week, where we could drop the wall down and have a smaller, you know, minimum nine inch curb. I do want to be clear, that curb would also vary a little bit. It could go anywhere from nine inches to 20 inches because of the road profile, but then putting a consistent steel rail bridge or steel bridge rail across the entire project, very similar to um, the one we showed last time I was here. Those are really the three options that I think are on the table that could be easily evaluated where we could give the contractor direction by middle of next week and this project could move forward. I know some other questions have come up um, about what would the cost impact be if we delayed the project to next spring. I have talked to the contractor about that. There are a few lead items that they've already purchased like the culvert that goes on the road that they would like to be paid for if the project get delayed, but they don't see any other costs at this time on their end that would they would charge the town. One thing I will say is when we delay the project, we open ourselves for the opportunity to look at more designs, more alternatives, which means more design fees and potentially um, more designs that could just be costly also. We don't know exactly what those be, but that, that more time gives us those options. Um, yeah, the other issue with moving it to the spring is um, we need to give them three months. And so we'd be hitting up probably in the 4th of July time frame. And so the impact to traffic and things of that nature is something to consider, which is why we had scheduled it for a fall correct. project timeline. I don't think that is really doable because that's Ocean Avenue is so busy during that time frame. So Megan, do you, did you have a cost for putting the, the and I'm going to put it in quotes, the bridge um, wall up? Um, I believe we had talked about that. If we didn't say the cost last week, I think it was a net 
cost of about $45 per linear foot along the site. So they would give us a little benefit on reducing the wall height, but the bridge rail is more expensive than um, I think what we had calculated it It was about 26, 27,000 total. I think okay. it was 29. 29. That's what I wrote down. Yeah. Okay. Um, a couple other questions that have come up that I just want to get in front of. Um, I know there was a question about whether could parts of the wall be constructed so that we could buy the town more time um, to decide. The way this wall is constructed, the top blocks have to get buried by the sidewalk. So it wouldn't be possible to only install the bottom blocks and leave the top block for a later date unless you were willing to leave the sidewalk closed for the entire winter. Um, so that would have to be a decision if that is even a possibility. Um, I know one other thing that has been brought up is some concerns on whether this higher wall would cause any hydraulic concerns with respect to John Rinaldi's house. Um, we're, we do not anticipate that will uh, cause any concerns. One thing that the project does have is currently there's a 40 inch 48 inch circular pipe that goes on the road that provides flow capacity. We are increasing that to a four foot by four foot box. Box pipes or box culverts provide a lot more capacity than circular pipes do. So that is one thing that will help alleviate some flow in this project area. But the town has um, reached out to the help of an independent consultant to review the hydraulics just to confirm there would not be any impact to Mr. Rinaldi's house. Megan, when you talk about hydraulics, are you talking about rainfall? Are you talking about um, storm surge from the ocean? Or what are we talking about? I think the focus, the, the concern has been more on storm surge and just the water elevations in general in the area. Okay. Any more questions? Mm, not right now. So I do, I have just one. So say if you went with the bridge wall and it's number twenty nine thousand dollars where would we get that from so why don't we talk about the budget so um mike and i spent some set some time this afternoon reviewing the budget mike do you want to come up just in case uh you have any other thoughts so we uh started with um the town authorized us a million dollars on the bond um out of that to date, we have spent 3500 on the legal and 6500 on the bond. Um, the contract with Shaw Brothers currently is just shy of $795,000. Um, we had a contract for the design with Wooded and Curran for 58, uh, design uh, construction administration for 35,000. Um, so that left us at that time with a balance of $102,500. Um, since then, we have um, had to have a geotech firm do some additional design for um, the wall, and uh, we will have to have them come in and do some inspection. That's another 10. Um, so far in the past couple weeks with Megan um, and these meetings, uh, with the River Club and, and here we've spent additional $6,000. This slope design we've come up with and other things. Um, we anticipate that we'll have another $10,000 in added engineering costs because whatever you choose besides the base wall <coughs> will um, add additional engineering costs. We also had another 10000 in um, potential excavation contingency. So that now leaves us with a balance of 66,500. Um, so at this point, we haven't even begun construction. So we don't know what contingency we may need out there for problems we can't foresee sitting here today. Um, the net price on the guardrail <clears throat> was $29,000. We also, uh, anticipate that where we are going to lower the wall, we'll have to add some railing, and we're working with both parties on uh, the design of that and the um, construction of that, so we'll, there will be some additional costs related to that. But if we run the wall <coughs> with, the, with this rail, we shouldn't have to lower the cement portion of it. What do you mean? Um, um, well, I mean, if we lower this because it's being built modular. I assume the modular pieces 
go from one end to the other, the base of it. When you excavate it, you're going to dig a big trench all the way down the 600 feet, and you're going to put the big pieces at the bottom, and then you're going to put the next stack on top of that. And then you're going to have to, if we go with the bridge design, we're going to put a smaller piece, or smaller in height piece on top of that, and then we're going to bolt, or they're going to bolt that bridge rail to it. So if we uh, went with that design, I don't believe we'd have to drop it anywhere well, along well, there. Well, the thing was, <clears throat> that is um, crash for crash reasons that we would have that guardrail. We don't need to have that guardrail in front of those properties. So the question remains whether we would just continue it or, what, or whether we would, they would want um, something else there. And I guess we're just saying that's a discussion point. We, we looked at doing some, uh, what we call a trans, what uh, when we met with the River Club talking about a transition and, and John having some transition pieces. <clears throat> there we're looking at some uh, poured concrete columns that, that mimic the existing columns as transition pieces at each, at their entrances. So, and then going. So there would be no wall be nice. there in front of the River Club and in front of um, Mr. Be, Rinaldi's? Be more railing, not not. But it's got to be a. But the wall, if, if a, you want to call curb, it a wall, a wall the curbing. Curb. Yes, yeah. there would be curbing and then sort of a different railing from the standard. I mean, uh, we could keep the you, same. Yeah, you could, but we talked but, about that. And no, we, that, I mean, that wasn't really my point. And maybe I misunderstood as I, uh, as I heard this explained. It sounded as though, um, the, let's just call it the third stack of the, of the, um, the base wall would be different in those uh, areas in front of the River Club and in front of Mr. Rinaldi's if we were to go with the bridge right. uh, design. I, I understand using a different uh, it, uh, fence, if you will, or wall. Okay. So the, the top rail might be different, yes. The top rail might be different, but the, the base that everything bolts to would be the same from one end to the other. If, if that's what the River Club and John Rinaldi said. Is that going to save us any money? That would Yes, that would save you a little money. To do that, the twenty nine thousand is net, so it is um, taking the credit, which is one hundred and seventy five dollars a linear foot, and adding the I think it's two twenty, yeah, uh, extra. So it's net forty five dollars extra a linear foot. So it doesn't leave us very much money if we have any problems. We are, we are very tight. Yes. Usually, and in some scenarios, we'll be over. Wait, and I don't, I mean, we would have to go back to the voters and ask for more funding. Right. We'd have to have a special meeting, a special election. Actually. Special town meeting, yeah. For that. So. Keep in mind that on the slope, we don't have numbers back from Shaw Brothers yet. Um, so some of these are just question marks. When, when do we have to make this decision? I know we had to make it last week, and we did, and but here we are again. Shouldn't we wait to get the numbers? Well, we are. Ha I want you re to remember that every time Megan is pursuing a different rail, I'm spending money. That's exactly okay? Right. Yeah. So her being here tonight, I'm spending money. So if we are, I get that you would want to see, because if it comes back and it's over budget, I mean, certainly that's something we have to take into account. But I think what we need is direction so that we are working on the right avenue and that we are not spending um, time and, and uh, money on things that really you don't want to pursue. Right. Understanding that there's always a first choice and then there's a backup plan. Are any of you in favor of that? Because to me, I'm not an engineer, but I've built a lot of things in my life, and every time you start putting angles on it and making it custom, it's going to cost you more money. And if we're going to pay more money, I'd rather see it straight from one side to the other and see the bridge rail there. Quite frankly, I don't like the bridge rail, but that's just me. Well, I'd like to hear the comments. Yeah, we're going to have, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm Is there any more ready questions for Megan from the board? <clears throat> if there's not, uh, anybody would like to come up to the podium and ask questions or suggestions, you're more than welcome to. Good evening. My name is Lou Rana. I'm the Commodore of the River Club. 
And this is my fourth meeting on the wall. And so um, during those meetings, I've learned a lot about walls and wall construction. Yeah. And uh, we're very, very sensitive to the uh, time and effort that this project costs. So first, I'd like to thank you for spending the time and having these meetings on this wall, because it's something that will remain for certainly since uh, I'm not here any longer. Uh, so it's really worth the time to really make sure that the correct job is, is done. So I had sent a letter to uh, you oh, a few weeks ago. And uh, first, let me report on the progress that we've made with your staff. And by the way, you have a, an excellent staff, very dedicated. Uh, the last meeting we held in torrential rains, and we got all of our items that we were supposed to get done, done. The first item was the transition pieces uh, at the River Club and also at John Rinaldi's uh, house. So obviously our major focus is the River Club and the transitional design from the wall to the entrance to the River Club has work, been worked out and I believe Megan has everything she needs for that transition. <clears throat> We're fortunate to have Elliot Sidorides as a member. Elliot, I think many of you may know Elliot Sidorides. So architect, uh, general contractor, and he's also worked on many historical buildings and renovating historical buildings. So uh, very, very sensitive to what gets built, especially in front of these buildings, which uh, date back to 130 years ago. Um, so the transition pieces have, have been made, uh, developed, number one. Number two, the non-critical crash areas, so to speak. Uh, most of the length of that goes along the uh, River Club. And that has been worked out. And I believe Megan has what she needs to um, finalize the design uh, of that. So. Um, hopefully this will be the last meeting for the River Club uh, on those two pieces. But that leaves us the rest of the, of the wall. So at the last meeting we found out, well, we thought it was 30 inch wall, but that now it's uh, over three feet in, in cases, which is fine. Um, but fine from the point of view that what are our concerns. So our concerns are what we call the transparency of how this wall looks from the River Club or also to pedestrians as they're walking on the sidewalk. Number one, number two, also how does the wall look from a point of view of matching with the historical nature of the buildings? Uh, so those are our concerns and given those concerns, Elliot came up with a uh, working with also Megan came up with a design that meets uh, DOT standards. Um, it's not quite the design that the um, downtown dock square uh, uh, bridge has, but it's something that hopefully is less than 29,000. Um, and with that, I think I'd like to ask Elliot to come up just to show you what the transition pieces would look like. And also with the design of the uh, wall in the non-critical crash areas would look like. It's one thing to look at a drawing like that, but it's another to look at the uh, basically conceptual view of what a passerby would, would see. So that would conclude my remarks. Thank you. Elliot, can I ask you to come up? Can I just give you guys a Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Um, the, second, the first page of this is basically a drawing of what is being proposed. Right. Okay. And the second one is a three-rail system mm -hmm. that we believe works, and it works with a nine-inch, uh, a minimum nine-inch concrete base under it. That's the one I was proposing, Alan. Yeah. So it's this. You see, the Lanigan one doesn't have the nine-inch wall right. here, so therefore it has a fourth rail, mm -hmm. and that really makes it look easy. It's kind of like the one around the causeway, right. I mean, around the head of the cove. Yeah. I went down the well to take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so that's 
what, what, what is being proposed, and this is what we feel can work and would look a lot better. Yeah. I, have, I have a copy on my computer. Thank Megan, you. Do you, yeah. Can we give one to Megan and Mike? Yeah. Thank you, John. Yeah. Yes. This is what I like. This right here. Yeah. I think this. That does help. Yeah. It doesn't help. Who This is. This would be me. Well, that's why we can't do that. Uh, good evening. My name is Elliot Siderides, um, resident of Kenny Bunkport, lucky enough to be a resident uh, and a member of the River Club. And the River Club had asked me to um, get involved when they, the proposal was first made. So I'm here and to help uh, facilitate this project for you. Uh, we, we're not here to hold the project up. We're here to contribute whatever we can to make this very special length of pedestrian walkway and probably one of the most scenic walkways in Kenny Bunkport um, live up to it, its um, potential after this is done. So I'm going to be really brief. The, 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 I don't know what was presented to you from our end. Uh, I haven't seen any of that, um, the suggestions that we've made in terms of the transitions and the possible uh, changes that we were proposing when we first saw this uh, wall go continuously from one side to the other, from the Nonantum to the uh, Port Lobster Bridge. So the first thing I want to say is I've been involved in this for about three and a half weeks. I've uh, been in a teleconference in the first meeting that was had with the River Club, and then I attended the meeting. Uh, this past week uh, at John Rinaldi's house. So the first thing I, I, I want to make clear is that we're, we're not basing our suggestion on the Lanigan Bridge. Uh, we are basing our uh, compromise to this project, which we feel strongly in terms of its transparency both in terms of its aesthetic uh, value, um, people walking by this, both in strollers, wheelchairs, regular size, uh, average size people, and uh, also the functionality of this crash mass wall. So the first thing I did, because I'm not a road engineer, is I said, you know, why, why do we need this crash barrier throughout the 600 feet. And I quickly uh, threw that suggestion out to the members of the River Club and John and Lou and went out there, looked at some of the grades, felt that approximately 200 feet of this wall, let's get this under control and get the mass of this wall down so that the relationship between the River Club tennis courts which is a historic structure, and the River Club Boathouse uh, has that visual relationship and also has a connection, both visually and also um, um, as people are walking down the pedestrian walk. Also, in front of John Rinaldi's house, very important to have those pieces um, drop so that one can experience those two properties. So the, that was confirmed by Megan that we could drop those. <coughs> the price of that drop approximately was, I believe, $175 a foot uh, to start with. So I quickly went to work to establish those areas as, you know, how do we design those areas? The first thing I did was to look at the area in front of the River Club, and I don't know if you have that in front of you. Um, did, did, you did you give that to them, John? Uh, I wasn't prepared to make a, I, think I thought, I thought this would have been given to you, but here, let me just give you this, and you can look at it yourselves. This was. Is this, the, is this what you're talking about? No. Nope. Okay. This is what I'm talking about. 
just pass that down if you can. Um, so the first thing I did, the area in front of the River Club, if you look at that drawing closely, it shows the ramp that currently exists that bisects the, uh, the sidewalk. And then it shows two <coughs> removable sections of railing that mimic the River Club's uh, ramp. But then if you look at next to it, you'll see two transition posts. The posts that are similar to what they are now, but we're not intending to use these posts as they are to repeat them every 10 feet. We feel that it's very important for the relationship of the River Club and the Boathouse to have those posts and then drop from those posts to the ramp. We left 10 feet on either side so that we could put these removable uh, sections. The, the pipe system that goes from the transition uh, posts left and right, you'll notice that these are, these are lightweight pipe. There's no crash railing standards. There's not a lot of expense to it. They're just hollow pipe that are pedestrian proof. So I started, I started with the transitions. And the next drawing that I gave to the town, and, and they've adopted, they have adopted, I believe they have adopted these. They haven't priced them out exactly yet, but it, it would be a net savings. So we, we don't know that, and we haven't adopted them. We have, we have heard that, and we're trying to resolve first the structure, but certainly we've heard that that's what they would like, and we're working on that design. But I don't know that it's a savings or it's a cost more at this point. Okay. So when will we know that? Do you know? Well, we need to decide what the <laughs> okay, I what know. it's going to be, right. and then right. we'll tell you the. We were told, time. we were told, that the net savings was one hundred and seventy-five dollars a foot without putting, dropping the wall, and without putting anything back. That's all we were told. I'm just repeating what was told to and us. And that, that and is... And I, I just, can I, I just like to finish, if I could, and then, and, and, and if, if I could. And then, so that was the first, the first thing I did. Um, we did the same, we took the same approach for John Rinaldi and tried to place some transition posts uh, in, selective areas for his building so that it looked like there wasn't a wall in front of that as well. There was some savings as well because I think there's approximately 80 or 90 feet of that. So th that's the first thing I did. Um, and that was shown to Megan, the, town's, the town manager, and we received um, positive response from them that, and perhaps you, because you, you were presented some, some of those, um, I don't know if they were presented the options, but presented the, the desire for the club to drop that, that wall first. I, I, I heard about it. Okay. Thank I, I'm glad. So the second, um, the second thing I did uh, was try to deal with this solid wall that um, in, in its scale, and I believe John passed some drawings out to you now, uh, using the Wells example, the Wells Bridge example, which is not the Lanigan Bridge. It is a uh, curb, if you look at it carefully, and then a three rail galvanized off the shelf crash rail. Um, not painted, not nothing, nothing of that kind. So I was comparing that with, because the transparency and the seamlessness of what we want to look at overall um, um, was important to the club and to the neighbors. Um, and I put the scale of a human being on the two, sec the two drawings that I did one with the wall that currently exists today and the other one which, which has some transparency to it. And you could see the, le the heights of a, a, an average person, a, a younger person, a person in a stroller. And so 
we, we felt that a version of the Wells Bridge with perhaps a curb or a higher, um, a higher concrete piece coming from the sidewalk. Lanigan Bridge, the, 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 it goes right to the floor and you have an, another rail, an, an additional rail. So it's a, I believe it's a four rail system. In this approach, we, we wanted to keep the wall similar to what's there, the, the top of that wall, and make it a consistent wall. So everyone from the Port Lobster Bridge, every area from the Port Lobster Bridge to the Nonantum gets the uniform wall that is as, as minimal as possible, but decreases the size of the mass wall, if you will. I'm gonna call it that. So by doing that, I took what the savings would be that was presented to us in front of the River Club, because I'm, I was kind of designing backwards, if you, if you will. This is not how we normally design. Um, and we, we took that $175 a foot number, and I took it across the whole project, from the Nonantum to the, uh, to the uh, Port Lobster Bridge, whatever bridge, it's a creek. It's called it's some kind creek. of creek, right? And I came up with about $106,000 of net savings. That's where I start. You know, I started from that. So I included the River Club, I included the pieces, and then I just, I wanted to see, from a construction standpoint, an easy build. All the underpinnings are the same. The top piece, or the third piece, would be a consistent piece, uh, pre-cast, easy to drop in, no custom issues to deal with. And from that point, develop a system that meshed the non-crash areas, which we wanted to make really transparent in front of the River Club so that you could see that building and everyone could see it walking by and con continue the relationship between those two buildings across the street. And for the pedestrians, more importantly, as they walk by, to have that experience of some transparency. Now, how to mesh the two, we developed some transition points, which are the concrete piers that you see. And if you look at the drawing of those in relation to what our premise was, which is the Wells Bridge, we basically just dressed it up. We didn't want to mess with a DOT change because they were saying, we got to use the DOT. If I was designing it from scratch, I would have you know, try to stretch that a little bit. But I felt it was important to try to, um, try to improve prove the project from the input that we had given them so that you know, a 60% you know, good project would become a 90% uh, successful project. And that's the short of our, long and short of our explanation. We are certainly want to continue to help design a really fine product for what we feel is a, a priceless Vista. Um, and we'll do that at our cost uh, if we can help. Feel, we feel we've helped in some respects in terms of the transitions, uh, but we certainly will continue you know, to work tirelessly if you wish us to help. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Uh, no, I think that was a very good explanation. I've got, a, I've got one. I heard of $175 cost, but that's, we yes. haven't seen any less. We haven't seen any paperwork on that, right? That's just a, that's is that a here so or is that something Megan, else? could you just talk about the credit and potential additional costs that we know of so far? Right. So the the Wells uh, Bridge Rail was the option when I was here um, last Thursday. We talked about it as a potential alternative, and we had reached out to Shaw Brothers about what would be the cost. And because they haven't appraised anything officially, there's no beneficial change order submitted. They gave us the ballpark park cost of $175 per foot to reduce the wall, and then $225 uh, per foot 
to put the different railing on. So that's $175 to remove the current rail design and reduce the wall. So that's the credit for those two things. One thing I'll add in talking with Shaw Brothers, they have a welding department in their in their um, works. They have that capability. So the rail that was currently designed, the smaller rail, um, it's you know small two inch tube steel. That was something they were planning on doing. It's something they can do in house. One of the reasons the cost for the bridge rail is so much more is because that's a that's a source they have to outsource or a product they have to outsource. So that's where that additional two hundred and twenty dollars per linear foot comes in for that product. So again, these are ballpark products. We wouldn't get a hard number until we directed them that that is definitely the way we want to go and we want a formal change request for that. And so that's where the, the net $45 Lori and I were mentioning earlier comes from. Yeah. You'll have to, sir. You'd have to come up. John, can you go to the podium, please? When you talked about the credit, and you're talking about the credit with, uh, for the concrete, but did they credit back their costs to make their, you know, rails as that, well? That's the credit for both removing the rail and re lowering the concrete. So, so that's to get us to a base elevation concrete, right. taking everything from the top height down. That's okay. the 175. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah, that was my question. All right. Yes, sir. I'm Bill Leffler, and I'm on the Ad Hoc Senior Advisory Committee. So I'm looking at this project from that uh, standpoint, if you will. And one of the, I have a couple of questions that I would ask, and I don't know who's appropriate to response, but I'm wondering, uh, because our concern on our committee is that the town needs to be age friendly that we don't want older folks having problems getting around in Kennebunkport. And this is a major project, if you will, just listening to the dollar amounts being thrown around. And I'm wondering if anyone has been in touch with the AARP and the age-friendly community folks that they have to come and look at what we are considering here in town and p perhaps giving some insight into things that may or may not be appropriate for that age group, which is at above 30% now here in Kennebunkport, and I suspect it's apt to be a larger number moving ahead. I would also wonder if you've been in touch with the Southern Maine Agency on Aging for the same reason because from our standpoint, we're supposed to advise you as to what our concerns are vis-a-vis -vis older folks here in town. And certainly, a project of this large nature might affect how the folks who are using that general area in that age level use it to their safety, to their benefit, and not in any kind of uh, detrimental fashion where they might trip on uh, the sidewalk if it's uneven or something other than that sort and uh, perhaps uh, have some liabilities there that we certainly don't need as a community. So I would ask you, have you been in touch with the AARP? Have you been in touch with SMA because it's going to affect the 30 percent or more of this community if they walk in that area. I can't answer that because I don't know. So, so Mike, do you want to get up and speak to that? I mean, we we have not been in touch with AARP in regards to the design, but the current um, design of the sidewalk, regardless, meets. Um, the standards and certainly will be in a much better shape um, for pedestrians well, than it these currently are, is. These are folks who specialize in that yep. kind of consideration. And if we're looking at as broad a picture as we can in regard to this project, I don't believe they should be omitted. Thank you.
just to speak to that real quick, um, when we worked with uh, the River Club and their brick, um, they did come up with a brick surface that was that was uh, had a lot of grit to it, that because you know, we had discussed having slippery brick um, in the sidewalk. So that you know that's something we can continue to look into. I'm sure you know the River Club doesn't want slippery brick either. Mm -hmm. um, but I've talked to uh, George Burr about that type of brick, and, and he said you know there are there have been significant improvements in brick design since we did Dock Square. So that's sort of why we we agreed to take a look at that. So like it has rough surface? Yes. And as far as, you know, when we did the Lanigan Bridge, um, it, as you recall, we did do some extra pedestrian lighting on that. Um, you know, we, we can look at we can look at lighting in the area to see if there are dark spots for people at night and that's something that, you know, we can look at. I, I can say, you know, if we add that type of lighting we added on the Dock Square Bridge, I know that would be, that would add, add significant funds to the, to the project. But it's not something you can't, you know, you could put that in later. In the, in the future. Right. Yeah. So we can, and we can look at that with our, with our lighting work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mike. Mike. Yes, ma'am. May I ask you? Yes, you can. I'm Susan Volk. I'm, I'm this year's chair of the Senior Advisory Committee. And we had learned about the brick pavers um, in a notice from the Kenny Bunkport Residents Association. That was the first I had heard of it. And um, I have a question. Are these pavers part of the public walkway in front of the River Club? Then I want to make sure my understanding is correct. OK. Um, th there is a concern about using brick pavers. Um, I had very little time to prepare, but I have pulled up an article um, that says that the guidelines of the American Disabilities Act require the walking surfaces not vary by more than a quarter of an inch. And it is felt that that is very difficult to achieve with brick and it's even harder to maintain with brick. I mean, we're all very familiar with what's happening in front of Hannah's, and I go, we, we walk very f frequently on that route, and that's an area where I will go into the street rather than walk on the brick pavers. So I just want to make sure that it's not a hazard, a tripping hazard for people. And also, if someone did trip and was injured, on the brick pavers, where would the liability rest? Would it rest with the town or with the river club? Um, that that would be a question I'd have. Mike, can you talk a little bit about what they how they lay the brick down now versus what they used to do? Um, what we're what we've changed over to is basically. You put down a layer below, as you put it, put a gravel base, sub base in, and then you pave the pave a asphalt surface, about two inches of asphalt, on top of the gravel sub base, and then about an inch of sand goes on top of the asphalt, and then the brick goes on top of the sand. Uh, the idea being that the uh, as long as that asphalt underneath doesn't move, like just regular gravel wood, it gives you that extra structure so you, you have a, a stronger base. Uh, and that, that does tend to help, but you know, obviously with storms or, you know, if you can have issues with brick just like you can have issues with asphalt. I think uh, the brick surface we're talking about, is that the one that's at two grand view that they just did? Is that? Yeah, except without the, the rounded sort of edge. But, it, but, but that surfacing is... Yeah, it's yeah. actually more gritty than that. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, there is a, a, the people at Two Grandview um, have a new brick walkway going to their house that you can see pretty easily from the road. That's very similar texture of brick that, that, we, that uh, the River Club uh, looked at. So, you know, you can go out and take a look, look at that if you're in the neighborhood. Thank you. So, 
the cost, we still won't know what the costs are. There are a few things that we won't know for a week. Okay. I would say for a few days. So can we just kind of put this off for a few more days till we get the information, or is that something that we can So we do? really need to know, like, Today? which, well, we need... Which way you want to go. We need to know what direction, because we are asking Shaw Brothers to do a lot of calculations. I mean, Megan, you tell me if I'm wrong. But we're asking them to do a lot of calculations, and we're asking Megan to... to she needs to develop a design as well. Um, so there's work that we could be headed towards, and I guess the question is, it would be helpful um, to know whether we're interested in the, you know, I'm going to call it the guardrail, the post look, or we're interested in the wall look. So what's, what, what do you guys think? What do you guys like? I like the post with the short wall. I like but that one as well. But that's the one that these posts aren't going to go the whole length of the wall. No, those I are just the transition. Yes. Okay. Yep. Pat? I also like that. I guess that's what we want to do. Okay. So we are going to work on getting, so we're going to drop the slope, the cement, so you've Correct. seen it up here. Yes. We're, we're not going to have Shaw Brothers cost that out for us. That was one of the things that they were working harder on. I think this is easier Yes, to get a cost estimate on and, Correct. and to move on, but means we also have to drop the um, idea of the wall and then we would um, come back to you uh, with a cost for the transitions as well. I guess where did the transitions and that railing within those two areas in front of um, Rinaldi's and the uh, River Club, you know, what time frame are we on with that? Um, that just think, I'm just thinking if they want to know what the budget, but, yeah. but if they're concerned about budget, I mean, do we feel like if we have $175 linear foot credit in those areas and we can stay within that $175, then all we're looking at is the difference for the other areas. Yes? I can talk to Shaw Brothers and see if that's the case. Um, we're, we're, I'm guessing we're close in that area. Um, it does help that that will be smaller steel in that area, so it's stuff they can do. The concrete will be different. That's a cost they didn't really have on the project, so that's going to be an adder. We'll probably be close, but I will talk to them first. I mean, the, the, col the columns, the that's columns another maybe. piece. Yeah. That's something that we didn't have in the budget either. Right. Um, so we had come up with a $29,000 difference. And that was based on, just because we've talked about so many things now, I'm just trying to collect my thoughts. So that was based on the fact that we, that was um, including the areas in front of Rinaldi's and River Club or not including? It was including it. We did okay. the entire length of the wall that at the time would require railing. Whether it was crash okay. or not, we were at the early stages of this discussion. So that was just a conservative this would be the cost to do the whole project in the the bridge rail approach and so i so that was what we estimated around twenty nine thousand. keeping Correct. in mind we don't have an actual price on paper and so i think we had calculated um that if we included the areas in front of the river club and um Rinaldi's, that was about a $15,000 credit for that area. To just drop the wall and remove the railing as currently shown in those areas, right. we were at about I mean, 15000 yep. $15,000 credit with a base concrete wall. Base wall, correct. So we have 15000 to spend there um, and potentially upwards of a $30,000 increase in the budget. I, I mean, I'm right. just trying to give the selectmen some idea of where we sit at this point. And if we are able to stay within those time frames, just so you don't have to meet every day on this, right. I'm, tr I'm trying to give you some scope that if we are able to stay within that realm, that you would be good with that. And if we are going to go outside that realm, that um, we would need to bring you some additional budget numbers. I just don't want to ask, have to have another special meeting to ask the taxpayers yeah. for more money. 
Right. So. Well, hopefully, we can yeah. balance yeah. it out. Yeah. Because you know, I mean, this. This, this will be here be long after long. we're gone. Yeah, Absolutely. And so, mean? can we Jump ask one more question? So, y everything you saw the um, pictures, and so um, this meets the criteria in terms of the design. There's no other questions or issues we should address with them at this point. No, and this actually was the detail. I, have a question. Oh. I actually. This was the last slide of my presentation last week. The, the picture on the left is the four rail, but we had shown the actual DOT compliant detail, which has that curb in the three rail. So that was what we were talking about when I was here last Thursday. So we had brought it to you as a viable option that kept us within the requirements of the DOT highway guidelines. Well, I'm not crazy about those railings, but it sounds like uh, DOT requires that, that type. So we're kind of stuck with well, it. Well, the concrete and or some sort of a railing. You have a question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, see, I like that, Sheila. Yeah. If, if, the, if the Shaw brothers have the capability to help us with the non-crash proof rails, um, and it's a question for Megan or um, Mike to ask them, the crash proof rail that we're Proposing at that, that height, the fat rail, let's call it, the the top rail can be anything. You know, it needs to stand up to the pedestrian, that's the pedestrian safety. Is it possible to, while they get a price for the river club, which should be less than the crash rail, can they, can we come up with a profile so that we have one rail across the whole, the, the pedestrian rail? so that the Shaw brothers can do that in-house and perhaps save us some, some money. Uh, that's just a, a suggestion. That's how I would, you know, once, once these shop drawings are developed and we come close, um, those are the kind of things we can shave uh, money off of and, and, and try to get this to where you want it. So your you top railing is going to be the circular? Yes. Uh, I, think, okay. I think it would be really great if we can stick with that DOT, you know, three rail, I'm sorry, two rail in our design above the concrete uh, sill. So you'd have two rails, the skinny and the fat one, and above, and leave the I-beams that are kind of raw I-beams anyway, leave them as you have them. Um, the structure of those I-beams that go past the fat rail to the handrail, they don't need to be that heavy. They're just for pedestrians. What I would propose is whatever we pick for the Kenny Monk River Club, which is just a hollow pipe, a galvanized ho a hollow pipe, uh, um, carry that through so that this becomes more of a seamless, uh, right. pleasant approach. Megan, can you ask that question? To see where beyond that? Um, I'm happy to ask it. Uh, I do want to note that it turns a standard uh, piece of railing. From, that's given by a fence supplier or railing supplier into a custom piece. I know they would do something, so I just want to say I do not know and cannot speak to whether there is or is not a cost savings approach. I'm happy to ask them and get that information okay. for you. So can we just ask one more, I ask one more question about the color. So the one that they've provided in the picture is that plain galvanized. Is that what they're proposing for color? No, and... Um, Elliot and John gave me some pictures when we met on Tuesday, and I can send those to you, Lori. It's more of a, a brown gray is what their preference was going to so be. So a painted? Painted. Okay. Painted rail. I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. Any more questions? So I, so I just want to, you know, now that that picture went up with the four rails again, I just want to backtrack and make sure everybody's clear in their mind that it's not that. Right. right. No, I just don't want to, because I don't want you to be confused. It's this one. That's it's the three rail right. system. Yeah. Yeah. Because, right. we, right here, because we add the concrete at the base of right. it. Right, the top yeah. three rails unless you modify the top rail. Basically, yeah, we're yeah. getting rid of the bottom rail and 
Yeah, and then replacing it with some concrete that's uh, a minimum of nine inches right. and it grows. Right. And, and so I just wanted to be clear with that. For me, I think what we're proposing looks much better than what we had. It's not as massive and thick. And also, I, as you know, I have concern about this water being trapped there and this alleviates that concern because it's actually a little bit better than what exists right now. So that water, if it comes in and surges in one of those astronomical events with a big storm and 50 mile an hour winds, I had a big fear that water just starts sloshing around in there and it's bashing against that wall, hits the wall, it goes up. And I just don't want, you know, I, you know, I worry, it's my house, you know, that that thing that traps it and creates a force upward. I don't know, maybe somebody's gonna tell me that really knows what they're talking about. They're gonna tell me, no, you're all, you're all wet on that. It's not gonna happen, but I feel like my common sense tells me that can happen. It can, so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. My plan was to call Barney Baker, our consultant, and say, you don't have to do the hydraulic analysis, get back on Cape Porpoise Pier. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that okay with you, John? Yeah. We can call off, call yeah, off we're gonna, the yeah. engineer. Well, there's a few okay. we can That'll save. Yeah. save us a little money, too. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. So, so any more? Well, do you have anything else? On this? I haven't to, received a motion yet. Do you so. want to set a, t no. a time next week to get together? I'm hoping we don't have to get together unless <laughs> you want to. Right. So what I'm at, do you have any more comments? for? I do not. Sorry. I'd like to have a motion on this. Um, like I would like to motion that we go ahead with um, the nine inch? Yeah, the nine inch top cap, if you will, of the concrete and then the bridge ra the three bridge rail uh, option. So just to be clear, it's not necessarily nine inch. Correct. Right. It is a range. Right. From, from nine, nine to twenty. Nine. If we are going to have it even, Stephen, that's what it is. With the with the transitional posts. So we haven't gotten prices on those tra that's transitional right, yeah. posts yet. And then, depending on the cost, the top rail. So those, I think all you, all you know at. at this point is that yes, you're going to go to the rail system with the foundation of the concrete, Correct. and that we will work with the River Club and John Rinaldi on the transitions. Yeah. On but the we need to gather those yeah. prices yeah. for right. you. Right. Okay, so I, last comment. Um, the top rail and the transition pieces. We, we have the ability to keep that nine inch close, but even the range is acceptable to the River Club as far as the nine to the whatever that range, it's better. Mm -hmm. But with the transition pieces, if we spot them in the right locations, uh, we, can, we can drop those you know, sections. So that, but I would prefer the, the construction to be just one piece one, one concrete piece across yes. and then start it. As far as the top rail goes, there's an I-beam that you see, and I'm not, I don't want to use the Lanigan Bridge at all for an example on the bottom because we're not even close to that, but the top piece on the Lanigan, you see the I-beam that extends from the fat piece up. That's a big hunk of steel. The I-beam could stop, and I think it would be a better job if the I-beam stopped because if you walk by the Lanigan Bridge stick your head over the Lanigan Bridge, you'll see a big I-beam edge on it. Do it sometimes, you'll see it. We can cut that off right at the fat piece. And then the top rail, if you continue that uh, round, hollow, whatever is a fence rail essentially, uh, you can attach that to the I-beam, uh, the web of the I-beam, and either weld it and you won't see that massive piece. It could save some more money. Megan, did you get that? <laughs> okay. I can sketch it for you. Well, I have a, a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I will second that. Okay, any more discussion? No more discussion? All in favor? Here we go. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you all Thank for you. coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming on this nice day.